Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today I'm going to teach you how to use the factor theorem to find the zeros of this polynomial function. So basically what we need to do first is we need to understand what the factor theorem is. So take a look. Bam. So the factor theorem basically says that the polynomial x minus k, which is basically what we're trying to find is whether it's a factor, okay? This linear function over here that they gave us. It's going to be a factor of some function f of x, which this is, if and only if the function's value evaluated at k is equal to zero. Now what this means, oh, so what this means in kind of like, you know, I don't know, English, is that, because uh, my mind is kind of numb, uh, is basically it's saying that if you take this factor and you divide it into this polynomial, and if the remainder of that function, or excuse me, the remainder of that division is zero, then you know that whatever you divided into your function is a factor. That's all it says. Okay? Now we can do this a couple of ways. I mean, this kind of the way I set it up here is to use the remainder theorem, but quite honestly, to use then the remainder theorem and then to factor, find the root zeros of the other function, it's honestly too much work. So uh, instead, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do synthetic division right off the bat, and it should save us a little time. Take a look. Bam. So this is basically what I'm looking to test. I'm looking to see whether this factor divides nicely, evenly, with no remainder, into this function, okay? In order to do this, we use synthetic division. We can use synthetic division because the denominator is a linear function. If this were x squared, well, guess what? Synthetic division goes out the window and you gotta use long division, all right? But in this problem, we can use synthetic division. It's a little faster. You can also use long division all the time, uh, but you know, I'm gonna use uh, synthetic here. So in order to figure out then how many columns of your table you're going to need here inside of this little L-shaped thing, is you're going to look at the highest power of x in your function on the top, add 1 to it, and that'll tell you the number of columns. All right? And then all you got to do is then you're going to count down. The coefficient of x cubed goes in the first spot, and then x squared, and then x, and then your constant. Okay? Now, the coefficient of the x cubed term is a negative 5. The coefficient of the x squared term here is a 16. The coefficient of your x term, oh, wait a minute. There is no x term. So guess what the coefficient is? 0. Don't skip it. you got to plug it in. And the constant is going to be a negative 9. Great. Now, what do we put over here on the outside? Well, basically what you're going to do, solve this bad boy for x when you set it equal to 0. That means take your divisor set it equal to zero, and solve that then for x. Even if you had a you know value here like 2x, you would still do the same thing, by the way. All right, so here x is going to be equal to 3. You're going to take whatever that value is and plug it in. Okay, 3. Now you got everything set up. Now you just got to follow these steps. Nice and easy. Drop the first value all the way down. That's why there's a red box. You don't write anything in there. Then you're going to take the bottom value, negative 5, multiply it by the outside value. So that becomes a negative 15. Then you add up this column. Let me just get rid of this because it's, I don't know, distracting. And that's going to be a 1. Then you take this number and still multiply by the outside number, put the result in the next adjacent cell. So that's a 3. Add that on up. So that becomes a 3. Then take the 3, multiply it by the outside number still. That's a 9. Add that on up and 0. Right? This is the remainder. So the whole thing about the factor theorem is that if you take a factor and you divide it into some polynomial function and the remainder is zero, well, then you know that by gosh, by golly, this is a factor, okay? That's a factor. All right, so that, that's basically that. Now, knowing that this is a factor, to find then the zeros from factors, we've done a ton of these problems, right? To find, factor, to find zeros from factors, what you do is you take that factor, x minus three, and you set it equal to zero. Solve that for x, and whatever x is equal to will be your 0. So that's basically the same thing that we did already over here, right? Now, I didn't know, you don't know, if this is a factor or not until you do the, until you do the work. If this turned out to be like a 4, well, then guess what? This isn't a factor. So then I wouldn't, I, I, I can't, I wouldn't be doing this because then I know it's not a factor. I don't set it equal to 0. It doesn't really help me at all, Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. So basically what we know is we know that this is indeed a factor. So I'm just going to leave it up at the top there. Okay. 
just gonna leave it up at the top not trying to draw your attention to anything in particular up here you know but uh sure so um where do we go from here well what we need to do is we need to kind of realize what these values at the bottom of the synthetic division table represent uh, the remainder is always in the rightmost column, then it goes constant term, then it goes the coefficient of your x term, then it goes the coefficient of your x squared term, dot, dot, dot. It does not match the pattern up here. It's kind of like one power less if you want to think about it that way. So I can now write my answer. I can say that when I do this division, it is equal to negative 5x squared plus x plus 3. Cool. Now... In order to find, so basically what we have now, and I'm going to linearize this like equation. What, what, well, that might not be the right word. But basically what I'm going to do is I don't, I, I don't want there to be any fractions. Okay, So I'm going to cross multiply this x minus 3. And you can basically just literally bring it diagonally across. right? If you pretended that that was over 1, right, and you just kind of... And you also have to make that noise, by the way, when you do it, just, just in case you're wondering. Otherwise, you're going to lose points. Otherwise, you lose points. So... When we cross multiply that, and I'm going to erase this line, when we cross multiply it, we realize that we already have one of the factors, but the next step would be to kind of factor this. Okay, that would be the next step. Now, you know, when you think about factoring, right, you're thinking about two numbers that multiply to this. Now, so that this kind of just goes on automatically in my brain. When you look at this, right, this function should look very familiar. It should look like an old friend. An old friend, the old, your old friend quadratic, right? Your old friend, the quadratic, you know, function. So um, when you see a quadratic, how do you know it's a quadratic, by the way? Because you have to recognize the pattern ax squared plus bx plus c. I mean, you have to, you, that's the benefit of the practice. If you're just going to sit down and do a problem here and there and expect to do well, well doesn't matter what you're going to study. Um, either you might get lucky for a time being, but there's going to come a point where you're not going to be able to do that anymore. All right. So you got to study. You got to recognize patterns. A lot of this is pattern recognition. So once I recognize it's a quadratic, then I'm like, oh, right. Okay. How can I, you know, how can I find the factors? Oh, what's two numbers that multiply to the C value, but that add to my B value, which is one. But you actually can't use that for this because you have an A that is not 1. That technique works if this wasn't here, okay? But, so that's like, oh man, what do I do? Well, you don't really need to factor this, okay? That's not the problem. The problem is find the zeros, technically, okay? So really what I'm thinking about is I'm, I want to find the zeros of this. How do you find the zeros of a quadratic? Oh, you use your friend, your another friend, right? All these are good friends. You use your... Uh, quadratic equation here. So you do uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. That's going to really like almost fall off the page. There we go. Minus 4ac all over then, right? 2a. Now, in order to do this, then you have to recognize and uh, identify what your a, b, and c's are. So we kind of almost already did that, right? The a value is going to be negative 5, so you can write that down. The b value is a 1. And then the C is a positive 3. So now all you would need to do basically is take this, plug it on into this uh, formula. And then just do some algebra, simplify it as much as you can, and you're going to get your X values. Okay, that's one way to do it. Uh, or if you're allowed to use a calculator, you can use a quadratic program. And if you want to know how to put this into your calculator and program it, take a look in the link in the uh, description below. Um, it's like a three or four minute video I made. And trust me, you're going to absolutely love it because watch how quick this is. I'm going to run the quadratic program. I'm going to put in my A value, which is negative 5. I'm going to put in my B value, which is 1. I'm going to put in my C value, which is 3. And then hit enter and up. Oh, there it is. Right? There it is. So now those are the values. All right? So those are the other two values. Those are the other two zeros. In other words, these are the other two locations on the x-axis. Negative 0 0.68. I'm going to round a little bit here, Okay. And then uh, 0 0.88. All right, 0 0.88. Um, so these are the other values where the function will cross that x-axis. Okay, that's what it means to be a zero, right? And if you want to just look at this visually, right? I mean, remember, the whole goal of the problem is to find the zeros of this function. In other words, just find where it crosses the x-axis. 
So just go to y equals, do negative 5 x cubed, okay, then do plus 16x squared, and then just minus 9, okay, hit graph, and look, right? It intersects the x-axis at three locations. Oh, that's interesting. We have three roots, right, or three zeros. It looks like it intersects it somewhere between 0 and negative 1. Oh, look. That's between 0 and negative 1. It looks like it intersects it almost at 1, right? Or it might, I mean, it might look like 1 here, unless I were to zoom in. But it's just shy of 1. And then it looks like it's a very close to 3 over here. Oh, look, it's 3, okay? So that's it. Right? That's how you that's how you approach it. You could also use the calculator to find the zeros just by graphing it, right? I mean, you could go to second calc, click number 2. Okay, and now what you got to do is you got to move left bound, meaning you got to, like, let's say you're trying to find the value of this intersection. All right, you got to move your cursor to the left of that point, just somewhere to the left. So hit enter. Then you got to move the cursor somewhere to the right of the point. So go there. Then you have to guess where it is. Now you're going to be like, wait a minute, what the heck? I, I can't click on the point. You know, what am I going to do? It doesn't matter. Just get close. Okay, just get close. And there it is negative 0.681. And that's what we had. That's how you can use your calculator. Hopefully I showed you enough methods. I don't know how many there were, but, um, you know. To a man with a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. I don't want you to have a hammer. I want you to have a ha just a hammer. I want you to have a hammer, a screwdriver, a sawzall, a reciprocal saw, which I guess is a sawzall. Sawzall is really a brand name, I think. Jigsaw. Circular saw, skill saw, angle grinder, pry bar, impact wrench, table saw. I think you get it. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If this video helped you out at all, if you don't mind spreading the word, telling maybe some of your friends or classmates, or if they're classmates and not friends, if you tell them, you might become friends. We'd love to help more people. We really, really do. All right. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. By the way, check out our channel because we have thousands of videos, not only in math here, but chemistry and physics as well. We solve thousands of problems because we want to really help you on your next exam. And you're going to see questions and problems on your next exam. So we try to walk you through the problem solving process. Thanks so much. Take care.